Okay, this is going to be the fifth video on how to do integration using partial fractions. And if you haven't done it yet, I would definitely watch the previous videos. Uh, just a reminder, one of the skills that you'll need, and let's go back to something that we used in a previous video. Um, we had this series of steps, and you will have to know how to decompose a rational function into partial fractions. And we did this in the first video in this series, and we've also done it in... Uh, the previous problems. So if you're not familiar with this, definitely go back and watch the previous videos uh, for this video to make any sense. So now back to the actual problem that we're working on, <clears throat> and it looks like this. Um, so what we've got, and again, the difference between this video and the previous videos, in the previous videos, everything has involved linear factors, either distinct linear factors or repeated linear factors. And in this video, for the first time, we'll look at uh, quadratic factors. And this problem will actually involve u substitution and also uh, some inverse trig function integrals. So it actually gets pretty involved by the time we get finished. Now the first step is like always, make sure that the power in the numerator, or power in the denominator, is either less than the power in the numerator, and it is, <clears throat> so we don't have to do any long division first. But the first step, just like those other problems, is to factor the denominator into distinct factors. Now in this case, you've got four terms, and just a reminder from your algebra days, anytime you have four terms, it's a pretty good hint that you should factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and first of all, we will factor um, the denominator by, and the technique we'll use is grouping. So hopefully this is a technique that you're familiar with from algebra, so factor by grouping. So let's go ahead and do that. Now the idea is uh, you've got four factors. We'll take the first two factors and group them. So we'll put them in parentheses and make it be x cubed uh, plus 5x squared. Then you've got plus, and then go ahead and group the second two factors. So 4x plus 20. So that's what factoring by grouping is all about. Now looking at the first grouping, out of this one you can factor out an x squared, which will leave you with an x squared, and then you'll be left with an x plus 5. Now, out of the second one, you can factor out a 4, which would be a 4, and it will also leave you with an x plus 5. Now, since both these contain an x plus 5, you can factor that out, so you would have an x plus 5. And what's left is this one combined with this one, which gives you an x squared plus 4. So what you've got is, <clears throat> that's the denominator factored so I'm going to go ahead and write that one more time. We'll put it up here. This is going to be the integral. And then we'll have uh, the numerator will remain the same. So this will all be in terms of x. <clears throat> so the numerator is still 5x squared um, plus 11x plus 17. But the denominator has been factored into um, x plus 5 and x squared plus 4. So the first step's done, you've got it factored. Now the next thing to do is to set this up in terms of partial fractions. So let's scoot down just a little bit and we'll take a look at that. So first of all, we'll take just the rational function, which is 5x squared plus 11x plus 17, and it'll be that whole thing divided by, um, this will be, x plus 5 and x squared plus 4. Okay, now what we'll do is, um, using the steps for decomposition, uh, you've got a linear factor here of x plus 5, and since this one is x squared, this is actually a quadratic factor. So you're going to have two factors. The first factor would be x plus 5, and the second factor would be uh, x squared plus 4. Now both these are non-repeated, so this is going to be a quadratic factor, x squared plus 4. Now as far as the numerator goes, let's go back and take a quick look at our rules. This one is a linear one. It's got x to the first power. So just a reminder on the rules is if it's linear, then the numerator is just an a or a b, simple letter. If it's quadratic, then the numerator is something like ax plus b or cx plus d. So using those rules, let's go back and take a look at our situation. This one was linear, so we're just going to have a simple a right here. But this one is quadratic, so we'll have to put, since we've already used a, we'll put this as bx plus c. 
So now you've got it broken down. You've what's called decomposition. You've decomposed it into two partial fractions. And now it's just a matter of solving for A, <coughs> B, and C. And we'll use uh, the same techniques that we used in previous videos. So let's go ahead and scoot this down. And remember to solve this, the idea is to multiply uh, through by the common denominator to change it into a basic equation that you can use to solve for A, B, and C. So in our case, that common denominator is going to be um, x plus 5 times an x squared plus 4. So multiply each term by the common denominator. So x plus 5 times x squared plus 4. And finally over here, um, x plus 5 times an x squared plus 4. So multiply each term by the common denominator. And let's see what that leaves us with. So in this first one, uh, the x plus 5s cancel out, and this one cancels out, and you're just left with this numerator. So this is going to change into uh, 5x squared plus 11x plus 17. Then you'll have an equal to. Now here, the x plus 5s cancel out, and that's going to leave you with a times x squared plus 4. Then finally on this one, uh, the x squared plus 4 cancels out, and that's going to leave you with this term, which is bx plus c times this term, which is x plus 5. So what this does, that gives you a basic equation without uh, anything in the denominator. So we'll come back to this several times. So let's just go ahead right now and we'll isolate this with a little box just to make sure we can keep track of it as we go through the problem. So what that's going to be, that is uh, the basic equation we're going to work with. Now we've got to find a, b, and c. Now to start with, we're going to use the same techniques that we've used in the previous videos. And the idea was you get to pick a value of x, which hopefully will let one of these terms go to zero. Um, and in some cases, it works out really well. You'll see in this case, we'll have to use a little bit different technique. Now, again, if you're not familiar with this, watch those previous videos, and they'll show you some examples of how to do this. So first of all, you've got to figure out what you're going to go after. So what I'd like to do, if I decide to go after a, I need to find some way to make this term go to zero. And if I let x equal a negative 5, then this term will go to 0, this whole term will go to 0, and I'll be left with just an equation which I can solve for a. So the first step here is this. I want to find a. So I'm going to put, and I think I'll do this in black again. So this is going to be to find a, let x equal a negative 5. Now, again, this is exactly the same techniques from the previous video, so hopefully you're familiar with this. So the idea is everywhere in this basic equation, you've got an x, go ahead and plug in a negative 5. So this would be 5, and in place of this thing right here, I'll put a negative 5 squared plus 11 times a negative 5 plus 17 is equal to, now I've got a, then I've got a negative 5 squared plus 4, then plus I've got b times a negative 5 plus c, and then finally a negative 5 plus 5. Now, the reason you picked the negative 5 is that negative 5 plus 5, this term will go to 0. So this goes to 0 right here. With zero times anything, this entire term will go to zero. Basically just disappears. So what that leaves you with is this. <clears throat> this would be, um, let's see here, negative 5 squared would be 25 times 5 would be 125. So that's going to be 125. And then this will actually be a <clears throat> minus, so minus 55 plus 17. And then on this one, you'll have a times, and if you take negative 5 and square it, you'd have 25 plus 4 would be 29. Okay, now, if you put these three together, add those together, you'll get an 87 on this side is equal to, and this would be 29a. And then finally, if you divide, 87 divided by 29 would be a, and that's going to give you 
3 is equal to A. So at this point, now you know what A is. So now you've got to find the other terms. Now, in the previous videos, where we didn't have quadratic ones, we were able to uh, eliminate this term by picking negative 5, and you were able to pick a value of x to eliminate this term and let you solve for b or c. Trouble is, no matter what you pick here, when you square it, it's going to be positive. This term will never be 0, so you're going to have to take a little different approach. So whenever you work with quadratic terms, a little trick is to do this, is expand this and combine like terms. And right now, you still need to find b and you still need to find c. So to do that, let's just go ahead and combine the like terms in this equation. So I'm going to move down just a little bit, and I'll do this. This side I will leave alone as 5x squared, so that's still going to be 5x squared plus 11x plus 17. And then this one, okay, now on this side we'll go ahead and distribute the a. So this is going to become ax squared um, plus, and this will be 4a plus, now when you multiply these two together you're going to have to foil them, so the old first, outer, inner, last thing. So this is going to become b x squared, then you've got bx times 5, so that would be 5bx, and the inner terms would be plus cx, and finally the last terms would be uh, 5 times c, or 5c. Okay, now it's a matter of combining like terms in this. So this one, I think we'll scoot it up just a little bit here. Uh, this stays the same, so I've still got a 5x squared plus 11 x plus 17, and here's an x squared term, here's an x squared term, so I'll put those two together and combine the coefficients, which would give me a plus b times x squared. So you combine those. Okay, now I'll combine the x terms. Well, what the x terms would be is here's an x term and here's an x term, so I'll combine these, which would give me a 5b plus c. So this is going to be... Um, 5b plus c times x. So there's the x terms. And then finally, just a matter of combining the constants. So anything that doesn't have an x in it. So this doesn't have an x in it. This doesn't have an x in it. So that's going to be plus, and I would have 4a added to 5c. So you've got this new equation. Okay, now what that's going to give you then, this, is I know what a is. I know that a is equal to 3, and the next thing I'd like to do is to either find b or c. Now, the way it works is this. Let's just kind of combine these. I think I'll move to red here. Is For the x squared terms, um, since these two equations are equal, the only way they could be equal is if this coefficient right here, if the 5 was equal to a plus b, then I'd also have... Um, if I just look at the x terms, that means that 11 has to be equal to 5b plus c. And finally, looking at the constant, that means 17 has to be equal to this one. Well, I've got the a term, so I want the next thing I want is the b term. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to look at just the x squared terms. I'm going to set this a plus b equal to this 5, and that'll give you an equation that you can use to find b. So this is going to be to find b, since I know what a is, I can set 5 equal to a plus b, because those two coefficients have to be equal. And I know that a is 3 from this step, so I've got 5 is equal to 3 plus b, and if I subtract, I get 2 is equal to b, and now I know what b is. So you've got b. So that was the step that you used to find b. So now, suppose you want to find c, and you've actually got a couple of ways going about it. You can either work with uh, the x term, or you can work with the constant term. So I think, first of all, this is going to be to find c. So to find c. Um, I'll set, in that case, I'm going to set um, the x coefficient here equal to the x coefficient here. And I now know what b is, so I can solve for c. So this would give me 11 is equal to 5b plus c. And I know that uh, b is 2 
plus C. So that gives me 11 is equal to 10 plus C, or uh, 1 is equal to C. So I've got C. And by the way, just to do this real quickly, if you wanted to, uh, you could have also used um, the constant term and set this one right here equal to this one right here. Let's just try that just to show you that it actually gives you the same answer. So this is just another way to find C. So if you chose, you could have let 17 be equal to 4A plus 5C. Now, in this case, you've got 17 is equal to 4. You know that A is 3, and then this is going to be plus 5C. So that's going to give you 17 is equal to 12 plus 5C, which gives you 5 is equal to 5C, or 1 is equal to C. So in some of these, it's your choice, whether you use uh, the X term or the constant term and so on. But the idea is um, pick, set the, expand the coefficients and put it in terms, and then the coefficients to the X squared term on the right have to be the same as the coefficients of the X squared term on the left, and you can use that to find the missing numbers. So now you've got what A is, um, what B is, and what C is. So A is 3, B is 2, and C is 1. So now let's go back up to the top and just kind of put that in a thing. What that means is, and I think I'll put these in blue, at this point, this A right here, so A is 3, then B was 2, X plus 1. So you're going to replace this with this, and when you do your partial fractions, now you know that it breaks down into 3 over x plus 5, and then 2x over this right here. So let's go ahead and rewrite that now in terms of our integral. So we'll move down again just a little bit here, and to start with, I think I'll just rewrite the entire integral. So that gets me to, uh, and we'll put this as the integral, um, and we'll make sure we've got the right color, and I do. So this is going to be the integral of 5x squared plus 11x plus 17. This is the original problem, and this would be x plus 5, and this would be x squared plus 4, whole thing dx, whoops, dx up here. Um, and it's going to be equal to, and you've just showed that this is equal to the integral, and now that you know what a, b, and c are, this would be 3 over um, x plus 5. So a is equal to 3, plus um, you know that b is 2, and c is 1, all over um, x squared plus 4. So now it's just a matter of solving this integral. Now what we're going to do is, like we've done in the past, we'll go ahead and split this up into two separate integrals. So I'm going to make this be equal to um, the integral of 3 over x plus 5 dx plus the integral of 2x plus 1 over x squared plus 4. Now, in order to solve this, you're going to find that you'll actually need to split this up. So we'll split this up into two separate things. This would be like having, um, and I think I'll write it right here, this would be like having the integral of 2x over x squared plus 4 plus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. So we'll split it up like that. Now what that actually gives you then is now three integrals. So bring this one down, and this would be the integral of 3 over x plus 5 dx, plus, then I've got a plus here, um, the integral of 2x over x squared plus 4 dx, and then finally you've got plus the integral of 1 over x squared plus 4 dx. Now, each one of these is going to require a little bit different approach to so treat them at this point as three separate problems. Now, one of the things you're going to need is uh, <coughs> rules to work with this one. And first of all, these first two will actually turn into problems involving 1 over u. So just to remind you of what that rule is, if you had this, and let's go ahead and we'll um, move this rule up here where we can see it. <coughs> 
So the integral of 1 over u du is equal to the natural log of u. So again, we'll treat them as three separate problems. So in this first problem, let's do this. Let's make this one be, and at this point, uh, I'll just go ahead and find this integral separately. So this one is going to be equal to, now again, I'll bring the 3 to the outside. So that's going to be 3. Then the integral of 1 over x plus 5 is just the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 5. And you don't have to use u substitution there because this is just a simple x. If it was not just a simple x, you would have to use u substitution. So this first integral is pretty easy. Now, the second integral, this one's a little trickier because it's going to take the same form, but this one is going to require u substitution. So we'll put a little plus here. And now in this one, let's do this. To do the u substitution, just look at this integral and treat it as a separate problem. I'm going to let u be equal to the denominator, x squared plus 4. Therefore, and again, this is just pure u substitution that you should be familiar with. So that's going to be equal to 2x. So that means that du would be equal to 2x dx. So I'll use this, 2x dx, which is what this is here, and I'll substitute du. So what that's going to give me, and again we'll go ahead and move it on down to here, um, that's going to give me the integral of 1 over u, and this just turns into du. And while we're at it, let's just go ahead and finish this, this integral up. So this is going to be equal to, um, using this rule right here, it'll turn into the natural log of u plus c. And then finally, um, just like in any u substitution, substitute back for what u is equal to. u is equal to x squared plus 4. So this will become the natural log of x squared plus 4. And that takes care of this second integral. So now we go to the third integral. Now this is where it gets a little bit trickier. You have to recognize the form on this, and the trick here is to recognize that this thing actually falls into this rule right here. And what this is, we'll go ahead and move it up here where we can get a look at it. Um, it's actually going to be the integral um, in this form where it's 1 over a squared plus u squared. Hopefully you remember that's one of your inverse trig function uh, integrals. And it's in this form right here. So what we'll do is we'll rewrite this and think of it as being the integral. This is like having uh, the integral of, and you can think of this 2 or 4 as being 2 squared plus this would be x squared, the whole thing dx. So what happens is using our form up here, um, this is a, so a is equal to 2, and u um, would be equal to x, and then this would be du. So what we can do is write that just using this as the following. So taking this, we'll just change it from this form into this integral, and we'll use that solution. So it's 1 over a, so in our problem, a is 2, this would be 1 half of the inverse tangent of... This would be x over, and a is 2. And then finally, on all three of these, so there's the first one, there's the second one, there's the third one, and then we'll add just a 1c to account for all these. And then finally, the last step was to go ahead and just bring each one of these things down. So uh, when you did this integral, if you bring it all the way down, it would be um, 3 times the natural log, absolute value of x plus 5. Then go ahead and bring this one down, and it would be plus the natural log of the absolute value of x squared plus 4. And then finally go ahead and bring this one down, and it would be plus 1 half uh, inverse tangent of x divided by 2. And then we'll combine all of the c's into a single c, which will go out here. And finally, it took a while to get there, uh, but that's going to be the solution to the problem. So this problem was a little bit trickier in that it involved, uh, let's kind of run it back up to the top, it had several things to it. First of all, you had to factor by grouping to do the original factoring. Then you broke it up into partial fractions, and you had to run through 
this series of steps here to find a, b, and c. And remember, sometimes to find the coefficients, you've got to combine the like terms and then set the coefficients equal to each other. Then, once you found the coefficients, you broke it up into uh, these two partial fractions and broke that single integral up into three separate integrals. And then in this problem, it just worked out that um, you had the, the final integrals involved both u substitution, inverse trig. So there's a lot going on in this problem. And if you treat them as three entirely separate integrals, when you get to the bottom, then you'll have this. So that's a, an example of um, partial fractions that involved uh, quadratic factors. And you can see sometimes it gets a little bit trickier to run through all the algebra. Now in the final step, and so far we've looked at all the problems, we haven't had to do long division because the power in the denominator has been bigger than the power in the numerator. And in the next video, we'll look at a sample where the power in the denominator is not bigger than the power in the numerator, and you have to begin the problem with long division.